Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, folks, the dark horses for a national title. We're going to talk about the three teams that I think have an opportunity. Also, uh, their quarterbacks, one of them could win a Heisman. Now, this isn't a really, really dark horse situation because these are they're a little bit under the radar, but not completely under the radar. Uh, these teams are very well respected, and so are these three quarterbacks, but they're not the absolute uh, most possible to win the national championship, obviously. That would either be a Georgia or an Ohio State. or I don't know if I can include Alabama in there anymore with their new coach. It's, I, I'm so used to it, though. It's hard not to. And then Texas is looking good. But these guys and these teams, they're just one notch below to where, you know, you get, and they're pretty dangerous. And so let's get into this. I'm going to start out with Missouri and Brady Cook. This is a guy that has what I like to term moxie. He does what he has to to win the game. He's got a good arm. He's very mobile. He makes very good decisions with the ball. And, of course, Missouri is coached by Eli Drinkowitz, Mr. We Stand on Business. And – and Brady's got a wide receiver that's going to be a first-round draft pick, and that's a Luther Burden. That, that guy can ball. And their defense is actually really good, and they've been good for uh, several years now. Now, they did lose Blake Baker, who uh, got uh, a better deal down in LSU, even though Brian Kelly and LSU, they don't buy players or uh, coaches or anything like that, unless, of course, they do. And that's what they did. Uh, LSU's defense was horrible last year. And they knew, hey, Missouri has good defense, and they probably aren't paying that defensive coordinator a lot of money. So let's go up there and get him for money. Even though Brian Kelly doesn't do that. Anyway, let's look at their schedule, because if we're going to talk about a national championship, they got to get in the playoffs first. And one of the reasons that I picked Missouri is the fact that, first of all, they were really good last year, and they've got an excellent schedule to get them into a playoff situation. Now, they start out with Murray State and then Buffalo, Boston College Eagles, and Vanderbilt. So they're 4-0 before they get out of bed. Then they go to Texas A&M, and I think that's a game they can win. Then they play UMass. So they're probably 6-0 and before they even see Auburn, who they're probably going to beat Auburn. So now they're 7-0. Their first tough game is at Alabama, which will be very difficult. I think they'll lose that game because they typically – Alabama usually beats them. So 7-1 and there. Oklahoma, mm, that's going to be tough. I think they win that. That'll put them 8-1. and one. They'll, of course, beat South Carolina. And I know it's at William Bryce, but I don't know. I, I kind of get the feeling that um, Beamer's going to be struggling by then. They beat Mississippi State. They're 9-1. and one. Ah, And Arkansas, so let's say they lose a game somewhere in here. They're probably going to be 10-2, and two, and they probably make the playoff. This is a very easy schedule for an SEC level. It's almost shocking. You almost never see an easy schedule, but they've got one. It's almost like they're in another conference. <laughs> so anyway, they've got a real shot at making the playoff. And this Brady Cook guy is no joke. He's going to be playing on Sundays. You can count on that. So they're a very determined team, and they want to prove that last year wasn't a fluke. In this 12-team playoff, they would be a dangerous team to go up against. All right, now let's talk about Old Miss and Lane the Kiffin. Ugh, Lane Kiffin, job jumper. Stabbed us in the back here at UT, but um, he's a good coach when it comes to X's and O's, and he has done a fantastic job in the transfer portal. He's known as the portal king, and it got him into a great situation last year, and he's even outdone himself this year. He's got Jackson Dart, who I think is an outstanding quarterback, another QB with a ton of moxie. This guy, when he goes out there, he's going to play you to the bitter end, and, and i tell you what, Lane's got a good one. And they picked up Walter Nolan out of the portal, also, Juice Wells, who is an excellent wide receiver. If he stays healthy, he will be very dangerous with Jackson Dart. Also, uh, Princely, who's a big-time edge rusher from Florida, which uh, Florida's got to be hating losing him. And they also picked up Trey Amos out of Alabama. That was during the whole Nick Saban deal. And he's a very good cornerback. So they picked up some very key pieces in the portal. They're going to be tough to handle, especially when you look at this schedule. It's another schedule that's very reasonable. They start out with Furman, Middle Tennessee, at Wake, and then Georgia Southern. So they're 4-0 again before they even get out of bed. Then they play Kentucky. I think they'll handle them. At South Carolina, I think they'll be fine there. At LSU is their first tough game. So they're 6-0 before they even play a really tough game, which is LSU at LSU. So let's say they lose that one and go 6-1. and 
Then they got to play Oklahoma. Let's say they win one of these two, so they're seven and one, eight and one after they beat Arkansas. Georgia whoops up on them. They're eight and two. They beat Florida at Florida, which will be tough. Nine and two, and then Mississippi State. They'll easily win that. Ten and two. I they could make the playoff very easily at ten and two, and they could be very dangerous in the uh, playoff. Because with those transfer portal guys, uh, Walter Nolan, that princely fella, Trey Amos, that defense is going to be much improved, and their offense is always going to be good. When you've got Lane Kiffin as your head coach, you're going to score points. You can just count on it. And he always has a good quarterback. It's just the way it is. So they have a very legitimate shot of making the playoff and being a dangerous team in the playoff. And when you've got a good quarterback and you've got a coach that can kind of get you there, you've got a shot, and it's very legitimate. And I don't like saying it, but it's true. All right, now we need to talk about the Tennessee Vols. And, of course, we've got uh, Nico Iamaliava, who is probably going to be a very legitimate Heisman candidate either this year or next year. I think it'll be this year. I think he's probably ready to go. And especially with the Josh Heupel offense, I mean, it. the guy was built for this offense. I mean, he's just the ideal candidate. He's going to be uh, Hendon Hooker 2.0, but I think he's going to be better than Hendon. And Hendon was fantastic, as you know. We've also got the number one player probably in the country in James Pierce, our edge rusher. This guy's considered a possible number one draft pick, and he's going to be ready to go this year. He's going to want to show everybody that he deserves that uh, ranking, and he's going to cause havoc in that offensive backfield for a lot of teams. And our defensive line is the strength of our team. It's very tough. It was number one against the run last year for most of the year. I think they finished second. But when you're number one for – I don't know, 11 games when it comes to rushing, you're a heck of a defensive line, and we can put a lot of pressure on you. As far as our offensive line, that's the one kind of weakness I was worried about, but we solidified it by bringing in a five-star Lance Hurd out of LSU who's going to play the left tackle position, which is the key spot. And we're very good at center, and we're solid at right tackle. And uh, we got like one guard position I'm concerned about, but we got about six guys. Surely out of that many, one of those guys can play that role. The one weakness for the uh, Tennessee Vols, and it's been that way since Heupel got there, has been the defensive backfield. It's been atrocious. But what they did this year is they went out and they replaced every player, basically. They just kind of cleaned house and started fresh with a bunch of four stars and a bunch of proven guys out of the portal that were all conference in their previous league. And on top of that, brought in a bunch of uh, big-time four stars as far as recruiting over the last couple of years. So... Hopefully, we won't be a disaster in the defensive backfield. If we're not, we're going to be a brutal out for anybody because once our offense gets rolling, especially with a guy like Nico, you've seen what can happen. Hen and Hooker terrorized every team except Georgia in 2022, and we still scored a lot last year. So look for Tennessee to be a very serious candidate for the playoffs, and let's take a look at their schedule because it's not brutal. It's got some really tough games in it because it always does but it's not impossible by any stretch. Start out with Chattanooga. Then we got to play NC State at a neutral uh, field. We should be able to handle them. Kent State, so we should be 3-0. and The one big game we've got coming up early would be the Oklahoma Sooners at Oklahoma. That's going to be a huge grudge match with uh, Josh Heupel, who was uh, scapegoated by uh, Stoops there years ago when he fired him as the offensive coordinator and kept his brother, who was a defensive coordinator, who was not anywhere near as good as Heupel was, And the rankings showed that, but, you know, look, nepotism is what it is. You're not going to fire your brother. So we fired Heupel, and Heupel has never forgotten it. And I can assure you, when Tennessee shows up, that game has been circled by Heupel, and he'll have the guys ready. That's a very important game. If they can win that and go 4-0, look out. Then they go to Arkansas. That should be fine. Florida's got to come to Neyland. We beat them last time at Neyland, and I tell you, you want to talk about being ready for a team. And I've told you this, the entire state of Tennessee can't wait for that game. Quit hitting yourself! Quit hitting yourself! Quit hitting yourself! The water tastes good, yes! Club, club! Then we got to play Alabama. Again, it's at Neyland. I can't give us Oklahoma and Alabama. We're going to lose one of those games. So let's say at that point we are 6-1. and one. Then we play Kentucky. We always beat Kentucky, especially at Neyland. Sorry, Nick Roush. Mark Stoops is 2-9 and nine against this team. And to walk around this place before the game, I was disgusted. The smugness of those guys just walking around like, huh, we're going to walk in here, we're going to kick your ass, and you can't do anything about it. And it made me sick. And, and then uh, Mississippi State, 
We should handle them at Georgia, at Sanford. That's the toughest game we'll have all year. That's the toughest game anybody will have all year is playing Georgia at Sanford. That's probably going to be a loss. So that puts us 8-2. and two. UTEP Miners, 9-2 and two at Vanderbilt, 10-2. and two. Very legitimate chance of getting in the playoff at 10-2. and two. And again, I feel like we will be easily one of the most dangerous teams in the playoff for the simple fact that our offense is a pain to deal with. It comes at you like this. It's so fast. It's so dangerous. And if you're a defensive back and you make one false move, we score. That's just, it takes one little mistake. And we're on you so fast that you don't even have time to get a play called. So look for Tennessee to be another very dangerous team that has a legitimate chance at an Addy and also a Heisman. And these three guys that I've just pointed out in this video, all three of those guys could wind up in New York very easily. They're that good. And you need that level of quarterback to win a national title. Unless, I guess, you're Georgia or maybe in Ohio State, maybe you can get away with having an okay one. But look, Georgia's got a great quarterback. And Ohio State went and got the Kansas State guy. So it'll be interesting to see what happens to them this year. But anyway, these are three teams and three quarterbacks that could have a huge impact on this season, and I can't wait for it. We're well under 100 days at this point, especially for week zero games, and I know y'all are excited too. And if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover all these big sports stories. If you've not subscribed, hit this little button right here. It will not cost you one dime. A lot of you watch my videos, you don't hit that little button. Just boop, it's all you got to do. I'm not going to beg you. My track record speaks for itself. Can we stop this cruel game and allow the boy to keep one shred of dignity? And right over here is the most recent video. YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.